Hey there! Are you looking for books for your kids to read that are past that phonics stage but also have real stories and do challenge their reading skills? Stick around to see which books my kids are loving to read. Hi, I'm Jenny with Kids Learning for Life and my two oldest kids are six and eight. For a while I really struggled with what to give them to read. And this led to a lot of frustration, especially for my older daughter. And it probably caused delays in them wanting to read independently. So like outside of their curriculum, which was Explode the Code and All About Reading, we had books like Bob Books and Biscuit Books. But past that, we kind of hit a wall and we were really struggling with what to give them to read, what would be at their level, but isn't quite a chapter book yet. So I actually got a lot of inspiration on the next books to introduce them from Stacy because she told me what worked for her kids. And also I saw a recommended book list at our local library for different books to introduce at different ages. So here are some of the books that got my first through third graders really interested in reading and able to read independently. And I will start with kind of the easiest level first and work up in difficulty as my list goes on. The first series that I wanna talk about is Fly Guy. This just happens to be the one that we have right now from our local library. My six-year-old loves these books and these are really ideal when you're first coming out of that phonics or easy reading phase. Each book really does have a plot, which is great for early readers. And these books, even though it's a really short book, it does technically have chapters. So it really makes her feel like she's reading a real chapter book. And the covers on all of these are really cute and most of them are sparkly. So I think that's actually what originally caught her eye when we saw this on the shelf at the library. I find the stories cute and wholesome and my six-year-old, like I said, loves these. And I really do think they're a great stepping stone into some of these other series that I will talk about next. So that leads us to the next series I wanted to mention, which is The Last Firehawk. I don't actually have a copy of this, unfortunately. Um, my daughter hasn't been checking these out as much from the library lately, but this was really, for my older daughter that is, my eight-year-old, this was really the series that got her reading independently and becoming like a voracious reader who just wants to like binge read a series. And this was actually a recommendation from Stacy because this is one of the first series that her boys would read on their own. So I was able to get them from the library. I didn't have to buy them and kind of clutter up my bookshelves. And they were really great to encourage her to read independently and confidently. These are adventure stories about these friends and there's like this last firehawk, they have to save it and keep it safe. I'm not exactly sure about the plot. And I think that's kind of what made her lose interest over time. She read about six of them and then kind of lost interest. But um, it, she did say that they're a little bit repetitive and so that's just something to keep in mind. But like I said, it was getting her reading. It was getting her reading like real chapter books. So I was happy with that. Now The Last Firehawk is a part of the Scholastic Branches book series, which Scholastic created to be kind of a stepping stone from easy readers into chapter books. So I will also be talking about another series in this Scholastic Branches product line in a little bit. Okay, so the next series I wanted to talk about is Dragon Masters. This is another one of those Scholastic Branches series. This series does seem to be a little more, I don't know what the word is, interesting, maybe a little more dynamic so than The Last Firehawk. So my older daughter really, really loves this series. And again, this was another recommendation from Stacy because her boys are also really enjoying this series. I think the thing really keeping my daughter interested in this is that new characters keep getting introduced. So each book is a little more exciting. So that's another reason why I would recommend Dragon Masters. It is pretty dynamic, it's a good plot line, and it keeps the kids interested. And with this series, she is still going strong. I think she's, which one is this? I think she's like eight or nine books in. And unfortunately, we lost our copy from the library, so we will have to either dig around for that or we'll have to pay the fine. But she loves these books. Um, she likes to read them right before bed. And that's probably where it is, it's in her bed. So we'll go look for that lost book after I make this video. Okay, the next series that I wanna talk about is A to Z Mysteries. I think A to Z Mysteries are so fun because these are mysteries for kids. And this is definitely an easier reading level than something like Boxcar Children or Nancy Drew. This is also another chapter book that has a lot of illustrations, just like the previous ones that I have mentioned. And my daughter is just starting to dabble in these. I think she likes them. I think she likes the idea of reading a mystery story that is not scary. 
And yeah, so there are enough of these to go through each letter of the alphabet and they even have other series too. So A to Z Mysteries is great for the mystery lover in your house. All right, let's talk about the last book that is really getting my daughters to read, which is The Adventures of Reddy Fox. This one is actually probably the most advanced book of all of the ones that I've mentioned, but this one, my six-year-old, who's my second daughter, she really loves this book. And I think it's because she's read the audiobook and we've also read together the Burgess Animal Book for Children, which is by the same author, Thornton W. Burgess. On a side note, I do think that sometimes it does help if your children have already heard these books in audio form before, whether it's from a book on tape, an audiobook, or you reading it aloud, because you know it empowers them to already kind of know where the story is going so they don't have to really guess and um, they're not going into the story so blind. Yeah, so my six-year-old just loves all of the Burgess Animal books um, on audiobook, and so I actually got her this for Christmas, and I was shocked because she really did, she really has been sitting down and trying to read it, and even though it's an older book and kind of uses a little bit older language or it's not as repetitive as an easy reader, she really enjoys sitting down and decoding this one. So I just wanted to recommend at least one tried and true living book out there for all my Charlotte Mason fans. And I know it's easy to go in this phase of learning how to read thinking, doesn't matter what they're reading, as long as they're reading, right? But I do think that it is important to choose carefully what you're giving your children to read. And that's why this phase in my children's reading progress is really, really important to me. And it's I'm making sure that they are reading things that are of quality and actually helping them grow. For example, another one of these Scholastic Branches series that I tried out with my younger daughter who's six was called Owl Diaries. I really wanted to like it. I really wanted her to like it. I really wanted it to be of some sort of quality, but it was super twaddly, meaning it had little to no educational or moral value. It was designed for slightly younger kids than the other Branches series that I mentioned, which are Dragon Masters and The Last Firehawk. It was done more in a handwriting-y font. It was supposed to be this diary of this owl, but the storylines were super like high school drama type stuff, and and I just wasn't into it and I didn't really want her reading stuff like that. Luckily, she did not gravitate towards the series, so I have not had to worry about trying to phase it out. I just always recommend that you pre-read whatever your kids are going to read or at least just skim through it just to make sure it's appropriate for their age level. This whole independent reading stage is so fun and I love it so much, but it is this whole new adventure that we have to kind of figure out how to deal with together. If you would like more tips on how to help your kids read more independently, then check out my video on Free Reading Fridays, which I will link to over here. It's really been a fun and easy way for us to, you know, give our kids the space to read on their own. So definitely check that out. See you next time. Happy homeschooling.